Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Um, normally, this presentation does go for about an hour. I do have to be out of here about 12.30, so I might just skip a few of the early slides, especially after the fantastic stories I've already heard from a lot of the ladies here, that you are already, you've had fantastic months, you've had successful businesses, and some of you are starting successful businesses. So, a little bit about Action Coach. Action was started about 20 years ago by Brad Sugars in Brisbane, an accountant. Fantastic guy. Now living in Las Vegas, he realised that for the rest of the world to come to Australia to learn to be a coach isn't going to cut it. We are now in 52 countries in the world, or maybe 53. Every month there's another country added. Brad's goal, or Action's goal, is to be in 102 countries. Does anyone know why? Probably not, because, Mac yes? <laughs> McDonald's is in 101, correct. And I, actually, I Googled it the other day. There's 100, apparently 196 countries in the world. I thought I'd better check that just in case there's only 100 countries. <laughs> but, so I thought I'd better check. Left and right brain. I was going to do this. Um, left brain is your logical, analytical, your black and white. Your right brain is your colour, your creativity, your thought process. The challenge is the left-hand side of the brain controls the right-hand side of your body. The right-hand side of the brain controls the left-hand side of the body. So, just to prove that, I'd like everybody to stand up and just find a partner, please. <laughs> you didn't realise you were going to do a bit of exercise. <laughs> 20 star jumps, no. <laughs> so, just somewhere where you can all see me, so just pair off. Two people. Okay, so, if one of you could put your hand up, please. The, the shy one, or the non-shy, <laughs> either way. Now, you, you are the A person in the group, and you keep your hand up, and the other person is the B person in the group. So all the A's point to the B and say thank you for going first. Thank you. <laughs> so that'll teach you not to put your hands up. So all the, what we're going to do is teach you about left and right brain controlling the other side of your body. So all the B's, put your hands out in front of you like this, please. Now, this is the hard part. Cross them over, if you can. Uh, palms facing, twist, so palms, fingers locked, interlock your fingers. Now, twist them over. Inside, now twist them over here, that's it. Now, the other person, please point to a finger, but don't touch it, and wiggle that finger. So point to a finger without touching it and wiggle it. Do that several times, don't touch the finger. Look at the finger, come on. Do it several times. Right, do a few different fingers. Okay. Right. Once you've done that, swap over. You, usually we can have about a 10 or 15 minute talk just on that alone, but that's part of the left-right brain. Something so simple, for most, some people, is, they got it quite easily. However, some did probably find a bit of this confusion. You really, really had to think. It's a bit like learning something new. Very, very rarely do we get it the first time. Unless we're in business, we get it right all the time, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> so what is a business? Our definition is a commercial, profitable enterprise that works without you. Now that doesn't mean you have to have a business that you never have to go to work to, but it would be nice to have one that you don't have to go to work to if you don't want to. However, it's your dream, it's your choice, it's your goal, where you take your business. So remember to work on your business, not just in it. The challenge is a lot of small business owners or sole traders or business owners that only have one or two staff, they say, I've heard this, great, I'm not going to work in my business anymore, I'm just going to work on it, I'm going to read books, do this, do that. Problem is, they stop bringing income in. Whereas coaches, the first thing we do is bring in income, because if you can't bring in income, you can't afford to pay us either. So continue to work on your business. Above and below the line, I am speeding this through a little bit, but above and below the line. Below the line, some of you may have seen or heard this, are all the bl blame, excuses and denial. Seven years ago or something, there was a GFC. Some of the people are still blaming that. <laughs> excuses, I just can't find good staff. I just haven't got enough clients or customers ringing me. Or denial, my business isn't going broke, I'm just not making any money. <laughs> above the line, ownership, accountable, responsible. This is where we should be living more often or all the time. 
bit like boxing. I'd never realised why the Harry High pants, the boxers, because punching below the belt is not nice. Same as living below the line. It's not nice down there, not fair. Below the line, all the reasons why things are not right in your business. Above the line, all the results. If you step from below the line to above the line, you get different results. Guaranteed every time. You might make a few mistakes along the way, but you should change the results, hopefully for the better. Proactive above the line, reactive below the line. My story, I suppose, 1975 I joined the police force. I was just on 18 years of age. I have six months training, I went to Q, and I was about a little bit shorter, a lot skinnier. My sergeant got a phone call one day and said, from a lady who said, I think there's a young boy out there who stole a police uniform and a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I did look very young when I was only 18. <laughs> anyway, after 10 years of the police force, all the business owners I met, especially publicans, because <laughs> we spent a lot of time in those places, they said, you just don't seem like a policeman. You seem too nice to be a policeman. So I thought, okay, get out of the police force and go to business. I thought, now what do I like as a business? I like going on holidays. So I bought a motel in Coffs Harbour, 30 rooms and a restaurant, easy, get up, cook breakfast, sit by the pool, <laughs> check some people in and then check them out the next morning. 1985-86, had about $50,000, took my long service leave money now, in those days always good money, went to the bank, the wonderful National Australia Bank and they said, fantastic, we'll give you a million dollars. I thought, who, who remembers interest rates? In 1987, 18%. Now, I, was, I knew everything about business, so I borrowed money interest only for five years. Yay! <laughs> See, because they teach you so much about business in the police force. <laughs> anyway, five years later, still there, working. My parents, coming from Austria, good European parents said, work hard, you'll make something for yourself. I said, I can't work any harder. Seven days, all the time. You know. Five years later, the bank comes knocking on the door. You've been a wonderful customer. You still owe us a million dollars. You've paid, a, a, you've paid us all this interest. However, our lending criteria has changed. We now want $300,000 to bring you in line to the current lending criteria. Didn't have the money. Anyway, another five years of hard work. Some schmuck bought the business off me. Any ideas as to how long that person actually worked in the business? Any indications? Not one day. <laughs> he put someone else in there. Charge them $250,000 for the rights to work in a business and have no lifestyle. They lasted six months. The next person charged them another $250 plus ongoing money. They lasted about a year or so. Within the first three or four years, he got his money back. I thought, what did I do wrong? It's not what I did wrong, it's what I didn't know about running a business. So that's when I thought I need to learn how to start running a business. So I got a corporate job with Yellow Pages, thought I need to know about sales. And in those days, Yellow Pages was great. Because two of them you could put on your computer or on your chair to sit higher. <laughs> now, <laughs> it's not even useless. We do it on our laps now, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, so Yellow Pages, Brambles, Recall, learned about sales, and went back into university to get diplomas, OH&S, training certificates, all of those things. Speeding up a bit to get the story out. Went to seminars, found Brad Sugars. I was working for Yellow Pages at the time and 400 people in the room, Brad said, if you want to be coached by me for a year, I'm doing a television doco, submit, put a one-page submission in. I did and I got chosen along with two others. I didn't even have a business. What he taught me to do was how to buy, build and sell businesses. So within that year and a half to two years, I bought a noodle bar, hamburger shop, pizza shop, two investment properties and our first, our first home together after having no money when we sold the motel. So, Bought a little bar, you know, pizza shop for $1,200, sold it 28 days later for $35,000. Not a lot of money, but good increase in profit. So, my story. <laughs> Who's, who, are here in the room, who in the room has teenage children, teenage children at home? Yep. Who was a teenager once? <laughs> yeah. And what do teenagers know? Everything. everything. What do business owners know? No. Everything. <laughs> we know everything. So, today I'm going to teach you a little bit about changing the I know pattern in your brain and calling it, isn't that interesting? Brad did a seminar once, six, seven hundred people in the room and he's talking about this sort of thing and a person in the back of the room, this guy looked more like a truckie and he said, yeah, but that theory would never work in the hairdressing industry. So Brad said, are you a hairdresser, sir? No, but I know it'll never work for hairdressers. <laughs> we, we always know why it can't work for someone else rather than thinking, how can it work in my business? So, 
the entrepreneur's view. Sales and marketing and investment. For every dollar out, more dollars in. So if there was a way to spend a dollar and guarantee to get five dollars back, you'd do it every day, wouldn't you? It's just a matter of finding it. So how do we do that? Test and measure. That's the one thing that businesses hate doing. The business that's the best at it is sports. They test and measure every handball, every kick, every pass, every, if you're playing basketball, every shoot, everything. Why do they do it in sports? But why don't we do it in business? So here we go. Number of leads. A lead is anybody that rings you, anybody that is partially, potentially interested in your service or product. Whether it's referral, whether it's through telephone or the Yellow Pages website, that is a lead. Once you sell them or a service or a product, they are then a conversion into a customer. Then we work on number of transactions. How many times do they come back to you? Hairdressers, how many times does the average lady go to a hairdresser? Six weeks, four weeks, 12 weeks, yeah. So, I think we're in the wrong business. <laughs> average dollar sale, who's the best at average dollar sales? McDonald's, McDonald's, the old, would you like fries with that? Now they don't even ask, now they have the meal deals. Now they buy little toys, the whole thing. They are great at doing that. What is your fries? What are you selling as a package? All of that gives you revenue or turnover. Then you look at your margins, your, what's it cost you to run the business, and at the bottom here we have profits. So, this business, 4,000 leads, they sell 25%, 1,000 customers, twice a year they come and visit them, average dollar sale $100, turnover revenue 200,000, margins, about $50,000 net profit. Sometimes that's usually the owner's wage, but they call it a profit, that's fine. That's fairly standard business. Now, 10% increase. So if we were to increase that by 10%, our $50,000 target or profit in 12 months, what would our new target be? Just, it's not a trick question. 55, correct. I'll put that up there for later on so we remember it. So $55,000 is our target. Is there anyone in the room that possibly could not increase their business by 10% in 12 months? No, that's good. Anyone that couldn't do it tomorrow? You could do it tomorrow? <laughs> Easy. Put your prices up 10%. Yeah, it. <laughs> do it! Do it. We had, a, we had an electrician come to one of our workshops before Christmas. And told him about prof, put the prices up. I saw him two weeks ago. He came on as a client. I said, how did you go? What did you take out of the first workshop? He said, put your prices up. I said, did you? He said, yeah. Did anyone complain? No. So number one, go home tomorrow. Another electrician, they were charging, they buy something, put 10% on top of it. I said, that's not enough, put 30% on top of it. They did that, no complaints. No one knows. Like, how, how, how much does a piece of cable cost, 10 metres of cable? We don't know. <laughs> I don't care, just do the job. Just to show, as an electrician, just show, or a plumber, just, just showing up is the best thing, you know. Most of them don't even return your phone calls, except for Rosie and Lee. <laughs> So let's increase these by 10%, not very hard. Putting an ad in the paper, but knowing which paper, doing something on your blogs, on your website, all of those things, just 10%. That's only 400 extra in a year. What if we taught you to sell a little bit better? For, again, for a tradie, it's easy. Just answer the phone and you're halfway there. Show up, you're the other half there. Then charge more, right, Rosie? Yeah. <laughs> not, 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 not for the ladies here, though. We keep our price. <laughs> Customers, 1,210 customers. Number of transactions, 2.2. Not a lot, just a little bit more often because you've got that please come back. Use your database. How often do you actually invite them to come back? Uh, I think you're doing something with um, Cerisa now? Yeah, we are. Yeah, so yeah. just inviting people in, giving, working with other businesses. What else? How can you align yourself with other businesses that have that entrepreneurial mindset? Average dollar sale, $10 more. If you can't get $10 more, one of my clients says, window tending, his mother answers the phone. I said, what are you charging? He said, in the middle, but, you know, the, the cheapies are there, the better ones are there. So I said, tomorrow you go home and tell your mother that every phone call she gets, she has to put her prices up $10 until she gets an objection and doesn't get a sale. They put their prices up to about $55 more than they had. They earned more in that six months, so over summer, 
than they did the previous 12 months in total. He only has to work half the time now. He can take winter off if he wants to. The other thing, what about who's got seasonal businesses here? No, not really? Yeah, weddings maybe, no. Why do we accept that motels charge more on the weekends and there's school holidays and all that? Airlines, why do we accept that? Why don't we do that? On a Saturday when you're busy, charge more. If you don't get as many customers, well then go back to your, at least test and measure if it works. A uh, client of ours, they own a camping goods store in Dramana. You, you might know who they are, there's only one there. <laughs> she, said, <laughs> she said, my biggest competition, if I charge more, they'll go. I said, go where? <laughs> it's Frankston, yeah, and across the road, especially over that six week Christmas period. I said, quadruple your prices. Yeah, whatever, you know, be like the motels, charge more. She had a fantastic year that year, just gone. So anyway, yeah, <laughs> gives you revenue. Take a breath, <laughs> take, yeah, well, why not? If you're busy on the weekend, I mean, your restaurants used to charge, it, charge more on the weekends. Public holidays, they still do, but charge for cork, all of these little things, but just test and measure. So, oh, about sales. This is, I might not even get to this. The restaurant is sales, this is it. So, I know. <laughs> At the end of the night, at the end of the night, you've just been out for a beautiful dinner and a waiter or waitress comes along and says, would you care for a, um, what's that after, the drink at the end of, the, no, the sweet drinks at the end of it, yeah, the, the, the drink, one. the dessert one, yes, thank you. Would you care for a dessert one? What do you normally say? No, thank you, most people. So I said, let's try this. There's four people on the table, get four glasses of wine after the uh, main meals are gone, put four beautiful, beautiful little dessert wine glasses down. First thing we do is touch them, have a look at them. Then you come along with three bottles of dessert wine and you present it to the table. Now, here's the question. Four people on the table, say a couple, two men, two ladies, who do you present the dessert wine to? The drunkest one. <laughs> the one that's been drinking the most, because chances are they're not going to drive, hopefully. Give it to the most the person. They're not paralytic because you've got to respond, but the one who's been drinking the most, what's he or she going to say? You have one too. Bell's Russo tried that. They had, I said 100% success rate because there was a table of two, one bought. The other one couldn't because they were driving. That's 100% or 50%. But even 50% is better than not even offering. So, how teaching you how to sell better increases all that. 27, profit margins. We work on those a little bit. You buy better, a little bit of understanding your profit margins. What was our target? 55,000? 80,000. In one year, just by doing 10% of everything. Now, just in groups of sort of three that you can talk to, two or three minutes, in your business, if you had, where are we? That's 46% increase in revenue, 61% increase in profit. In 12 months, easy, 10%. It's a little bit. Is that possible in my business? Don't know, some of you can do a lot more than that. Question, what would you do with an extra, in this case, 61% or 30,000? Because if you don't know what you're going to do with it, it's like a dream, you'll never go for it. Groups of three or so, just discuss what you would do with either 61% or 30,000 more profit, whether that comes next month or at the end of the year. A quick one minute chat amongst yourselves. Okay. So, this group of ladies here, what just one thing that you discussed that you would do with your extra 30,000? Just one thing. Give yourself away. Wait, pay, pay, yay! <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? Anything else? Just reinvest it. Reinvest into the, back into the business? Yeah, reinvest. Now, my spelling is not too good, so hopefully they have spell check in this. In reinvest. Yeah, yay. <laughs> Someone else, ladies? Buy next, yeah, another business, second business? Yep. Anything else? New staff? Upskill. That, was that ups <laughs> Is that part of hiring a coach or upskilling? Sorry, no. Um, staff, upskill, yep. What else? Holiday. Holiday. What about shoes? No one's going to buy shoes. <laughs> yeah, invest in yourself. Look, but the, the purpose of the extra. Sorry? The shoes within in, uh, <laughs> No, shoes are not in there. Like cars, cars and that, not. maybe a Mustang, or a GDHO is an investment, anything else, yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> Jim Street. I know, I know. Uh, so, the thing is, if you don't know what you're going to do with it, you're less likely to get it. So, reward yourself along the way. Pay yourself a wage, that's also nice. So, for fun, is there anyone in the room that could not double their business, totally double it from where they are now, in one year's time, if they really did... Yeah, <laughs> one of my clients had the best month ever. It was his first month. The second month he doubled his business. He put two clients on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, you know, there's probably... <laughs> if you really, really work these formulas, you could double your business. What about if you couldn't do it in one year? What, roughly, give us a few years. What, five years? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, those insta oh, don't you love those overnight successes? The juice lady, seven, ten years she was working from her garage, 24 hours a day, whatever, but suddenly you've become an overnight success because you're out in the market. Seven years is an overnight success nowadays. So we reckon about five years, so, or one year. Somewhere between five years and one year, double. Now, what's our target? We're looking at 50,000. What's our target to double? 100. We're in maths, that's good. One thing they didn't teach me in the police force was mathematics. I just had to count... <laughs> Couldn't fit more than six prisoners in a van, but more than ten in a cell. So that was about all I needed to know. <laughs> so, number of leads, 4,000. We're going to double it because you're going to write ads that sell. You're going to grow your business. You're going to find out which ads work, which ones don't. You're going to test and measure. So you've got 8,000 inquiries in five years. That's per, per year, but it takes you a bit of time to get there. So if you've only got 200 inquiries now, you double it to 400. We've got 4,000, we double it to 8,000. We teach you to sell a little bit better or you read some books on selling. That's the other thing. I ask all of my clients, if I look on your bookshelf now, what sort of books are on your bookshelf? Most technicians have books on their technical skills. Masseuse, masseuse, beauty, beauty. Gym junkies, fitness. Where's your books on sales, on marketing? What about a books on how to run a business? Not just one book, a bookshelf full of them. How to hire stuff, all of these things. And not just read them once, but read them and understand them. The first book we give to all of our clients is the Emmy. And if you don't like reading, buy it on the, whatever. Yeah. Listen, absolutely. That is, everybody in this room, that book was written about everybody in this room, guaranteed. I'm on YouTube. Now, YouTube's fantastic. You do these five minute somethings, just get all these ideas. TED Talks, brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, even a professor can make you laugh in that one of the top 20s. So start re educating yourself. So. <laughs> Number of customers. Now, we teach you, you use your database, actually asking people to come back, working with other businesses like Bell Cerezo and, what's your business name again, sorry? Yes, doing. Um, so they come back four times a year instead of just twice. Average dollar sale, you've got more products, you've grown your business, you're offering you know, other facials, you're doing a lot more other things with that as well. So, turnover, what's our target, doubling it? Yes? 3.2 million dollars. Oh. Why? Close your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> if you are serious about your business and you're currently here and in five years you want to be here, just improve yourself and your business. 10% a year, a day, a month, whatever. 3.2 million. It's a mathematics. You're not adding, you're multiplying. Now, we do the same with our margins. $1.6 million profit in your pocket to buy as many shoes as you like in five years' time. Now, are there any accountants in the room or bookkeepers? Yeah? <laughs> you love this, don't you? What's the hardest one of these to actually do to double? Perfect. So let's leave the margin at 25% which means we only have half of 1.6 million, which is how much? Is anyone disappointed about that? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's it. Look, forget this one, yeah, the accountant can help you with that. <laughs> but we work on everything else. 10%. And the other thing is, test and measure your effectiveness, your time and everything. If you were going to compete in the Olympics, you wouldn't try and beat your average time, would you? What do Olympians beat? PB. 
Go back and look at your business and say, what was my personal best in my business? And beat that. Don't just beat your average for the month. Beat your personal best every time. Quoting Mr. Rohn, never wish your life were easier. Wish that you were better. Work harder on yourself than you do on your business.